What's up, ladies, gents, girls with lace fronts, dudes with kids? It's the one and only, you can't clone me, queen, baby. And before we get into this video, make sure you go down below to subscribe and join the queendom. And if you already a part of this palace, hey y'all, hey. So as you already read the title down below, I'm going to be getting into Tyler Perry's Bruh episode 12. So excited. Where are we about to go this episode? <laughs> so with that being said, let's get into the video. Okay, so coming off of last week's episode, we see that Mike is drunk or just being belligerent and basically trying to holler at every girl that he sees because he's still kind of upset that Pam ditched him or Pam don't want to be with him. So she kind of like, deuces, I don't want to deal with you no more. Um, because he basically confessed his love to her. So now that she denied him and she don't want it from him, um, he's drunk, he's with the guys, they having fun, and him being him, him being the person that he is, he's trying to holler at anything that walks by. It's just so happened this white girl walks by, and she's just smiling at them and looking at them and just like trying to see what is Mike talking about, only to come, only for us to realize that it was the Dean's daughter, the one that accused Mike, well really accused John of sexually assaulting her when it was really Mike, who was with her that night. John wasn't even there. And Mike is, didn't even realize who she was and he was the one who was talking to her. So that's where we end off from episode 11, last week's episode. Now we're here, episode 12, y'all. We basically entering and finishing off the entire scene of the Dean's daughter, the old white girl that was the Dean's daughter and the boys and all of them just having a conversation. Really at this point, it's not even a conversation to be had because they tight, they upset they mad they don't want to be with her around her don't want to be in her presence they really just want her to go away but her on the other hand she just thinks it's so funny and it's irking my nerves because not only am i upset that she said that and lied because she admits that she lied like oh you guys are still mad about that that was so long ago i didn't want to get in trouble we were young no y'all was not young and beyond and this this is the problem that um, our black man, first of all, I don't even know why y'all be trying to deal with these white girls. So we can start there. But <laughs> we not, we ain't even gonna go into that. Cause they always, it always come back around. Like, in, I shot in the ad, like every time, every single time, like just leave them alone. They not even, who, why? Why would y'all even wanna be with them? But anyways, she thinks it's like a joke. She's not taking it seriously. Like she's literally ruined somebody's life into her. Like any always like a white woman that thinks she has privilege thinks that, oh, well, it, it, does, it didn't affect me. So I really don't care about it. And you guys should just let it go anyways. And she kept saying like her main thing was we were so young and I didn't want to get in trouble. We were so young and I didn't want to get in trouble. Mind you, they were in college, probably um sophomores in college. And yeah, you feel like, oh, y'all was young, but you ruined somebody entire life. Somebody has a case and he went to jail for something he did not do. And she's not taking that into account. This grown white woman who's now Admitting, uh, of course she lied, really don't see the fault in what she did. And that just bored my blood. Like, oh, I'm like, and uh, that whole scene was so long. It's like, okay, why are y'all even still here? Why is there any conversation going on right now? Cause honestly, y'all need to go. Bye. Cause if she not gonna leave, y'all need to leave. So they, they was trying to hurry up this situation, but it wasn't fast enough for me. They didn't go fast enough for me. But eventually, they did end up leaving. And when they was leaving out the door, Bill and John had already left. And it was Mike and Tom behind. Because as they were leaving, Mike sees Pam is on a date the whole time. He was over there at the bar. Now, mind you, last episode, we was... Um, we had a whole scene of just them two having a conversation. And when they left... Mike went to the, the restaurant or to the bar with the boys and shoot, bam, baby, she was getting, went to go get ready for her date. <laughs> ha, 
the irony of it all. But anyway, so now that Mike has run into Pam, well, Mike and Tom has run into Pam, and she's on this date, Lord Jesus, Mike just being a self-centered, inconsiderate, conceited person that he is, decides, oh, well, let me stop and let me mess with them. Like, that's the vibe that he gave off. So he starts coming in, messing with Pam, and then starts messing with the guy that he that she's on a date with. So she he's just like, oh, bruh, like, what's your name, bruh? Um, who you is, what you do? Like, just ask him all these type of questions. And the dude is like, hey, chill out, little man. Like, basically, I'm not on it. Now, mind you guys, this is not the first time Mike has done this. This is the second time Mike has done this. When this girl has been on a date, he's seen her on a date, and he's confronted the person she's on the date with last time when he was on the um pam was on the date and he confronted the boy he threw water all on the boy pants like the outfit and everything and the guy was just like he just kind of brushed it off like it wasn't like a big i ain't even gonna say it wasn't a big deal but he didn't cause a scene like he just was Mike left, did it, he left. Mike probably, Mike was scared though. He thought he was for to get beat up. That boy was for to come out to him. But he didn't, he left it alone. This dude who Pam is on a date with now, baby, he's not playing that. He's going tick for tat with Mike because Mike, Mike always feel a need. Not even so much feel a need, but Mike feel like he's so big and bad. Mind y'all, Mike is two feet tall. So honestly, everything, this whole persona, everything that he do is too basically put on the front like he's this type of person he's so big and bad but i i know inside he be crying i just know he be crying any type of altercation that mike's end up being in the person i feel like the person that he's in it with just looks down on him that they kind of like just brush him off and kind of ignore him so they don't really start no drama but it's like he always nitpick, nitpick, nitpick. So he he met the right one. He met his match. And this guy's like, bro, I need you to leave type, type of mess. Like, I need you to go. You killing our vibe. We on a date. Like, she begging. Pam is begging this man to leave. Like, begging him. Like, and telling Tom, like, Tom, can you please get your friend? He's, he's ruining what I got going on. And I really don't want nothing to do with him. Like, why is he even here? Why is he talking to me? Mike done stepped up to the man, like, basically, like, just all up in the man's face. And, bro, like, nah, like, we ain't even on this type of time. Like, you can't you can't do that to me. Like, no. And Pam is still begging Tom to get him. Now, Tom, I feel like in this situation, is probably not the best person to be there with Mike. Only for the simple fact that Tom is so passive. Like, he's not aggressive enough. Like, Mike... He's little, but he's aggressive. So like, the moment he, Mike tries to be like, bruh, come on. Mike like, bruh, don't touch me. Like, no, don't touch me. I'm gonna handle it. Like, he comes off as that. And Mike is, I mean, and Tom is like, all right, bruh, like you got it. Like, Tom not gonna come at him in no type of way that's gonna basically snatch him up and make him leave. So he finally just gets on all both knees and begs and please. To Pam, I want to be with you. I love you. Please, like, you the one. Like, come home with me. Like, this ain't even your type of dude. Like, you asked for 100K. Like, I got it for you. Like, I, I got the bed for you. Anything you want, I got you. Like, this a clown. He a bozo type of vibe. And that man was supposed to split Mike right then and there. But, you know, you Mike is the type of person, like, you really can't entertain him. And, of course, people going to be like, oh, well, he drunk anyways. Which, I don't think he was drunk, drunk, but he was a little, you know, he was on it a little bit. But he would have did this regardless. Because, like I said, this is not the first time this happen, happened. And it's just like a re uh, um, repeated cycle with him and Pam out of nowhere. That's the craziest part. This this whole thing is just really out of nowhere. And Pam is really not going for that. But eventually, Mike gets over it because Pam ends up throwing water on him. But eventually, he ends up getting up and leaving because he feel like everything that he had done did and was doing clearly is not working. So he leaves. Thank God. Thank you, Jesus. So when that scene is over, we go into John and Bill who been left and what they got going on. They ain't really doing nothing. They just in the car talking about the whole situation that happened with the Dean's daughter, little white girl, and how John took it so well. Like, granted, John in the situation, um, at that moment, in that part, in that scene, at that time, 
John was mad and he and you can see it in him on his face and you just felt how mad he was but he didn't say nothing it wasn't until she came towards him came at him it's like oh John you're not gonna say nothing bitch Girl, no, I'm not for the say nothing to you. You got me put in jail. You got me kicked out of school. Girl, don't, why you, don't play at me. Don't even want to play at me like that. Beyond that, like, John was really cool. And he was like, all right, like, because he, he understands, like, because he already went through the situation, he's kind of just over it. Like, he just don't want to go back to that. Like, that's his past. Like, that's past him. He over it. And Bill just trying to understand, like, dang, bro, you really took that well. Like, I'm proud of you. And... Bill, I mean, and John's basically like, oh, well, thank you, but I don't really need y'all to, like, you know, keep bringing it up, making me feel like, just let it go. I let it go, so I need y'all to let it go, so hopefully everybody let it go. Hmm. And then they start talking about girls, of course, because, you know. And Bill asks John or tell John that he needs to call a girl, and he like, nah, I ain't gonna call her, whatever, whatever. And then John like, well, you... What you got going on with Regina? Like, why you around here trying to mess up what that girl got going on? Knowing you don't even want her. And Bill is basically like, well, I do want her. And I think I've grown and I'm ready to commit. And she's the one who I want to commit to and be with. And yada, 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 chit, chat. It's all this. This is all I'm, I'm hearing because if y'all, well, y'all could go up and click my info box and go see the previous episode where what well, the previous recaps that I did basically explaining what all happened when Bill found out Regina was getting married. Y'all can go back and watch that. But the reason why I'm really like not really caring what Bill is saying as far as Regina go is because like he just overall in that situation is dead wrong because he did her dirty for years. Not just a little bit of time for years. She put up with it only for him not to commit to her and just basically broke her heart. Like it was just a terrible situation. A situation that many girls probably would not want to be in. That they put themselves in and they probably wouldn't want to be in. And you would just pray that they wouldn't get back in a situation like that. But who knows? So he like, okay, yeah, I'm ready to commit. So we going to they drive into John's sub shop. Once again, the irony of us seeing them talk about Regina to actually run into Regina at the sub shop because freaking John Mama, I'm so sick of her, but I'm glad they ain't put too much of her in this episode because y'all know I can't stand her. She just be doing too much sometimes. Granted, the little pause that she did have, she was doing too much. <laughs> but it wasn't as extra as it usually be in all the previous episodes. But they go into the sub shop and realize that Regina is having her bachelorette party at the sub shop. Well, she was, they was hungry, so they came there. So they must be was having a good time while they're out. And they came to the sub shop because John Mama and Regina is really close. Like, she really um, talked to John's mom a lot. So they had the sub shop having to have the strippers. Everything's going up. It's going down. Then you got Jill and John and Bill walking in and... Bill sees Regina, Regina sees, sees um, Bill, and they start talking, and he just start getting, he just be talking wild. Like, for some reason, when he starts talking to her, he just be saying some stuff that just don't need to be said. But it all ends up to, like, dang, you really gonna go through with this? This is really happening. And she like, yeah, like, that's my man. We are getting married. Now, mind you, Bill don't know that Regina has moved up her wedding day because she was trying to avoid running into Bill in any situation before she got married. So she felt like moving up her wedding day will kind of like avoid that. But granted, I can, I can understand you not thinking that you're going to run into him, but the chances of you not was very, very slim because of the situation that you're in now, so... My whole thing about the situation is the fact that she said that she moved up her wedding date, which let me lets me know that she's clearly not over Bill. Because what type of woman are you? Like, what type of person does that? And what type of fiance you have that would let you do something like that? Because you trying to avoid your ex, who clearly you're so deep in love with. Like, he's the only person like you feel like you'll ever be in love with. So to avoid that, you gonna move up your wedding date. Like that just seems so suspect to me. And I'm like, okay, well clearly you're not over Bill if that's the reason why you moved up. If you're moving up your whole wedding date for a whole nother dude, then you clearly not over him. And that's my 
interpretation on it. But the whole time she's um, talking to Bill and having a conversation with Bill, which really isn't that long, um, she do kind of give off that vibe like, oh, I am over you. Like, to the point, like, she slapped him. She over him. Like, just get away from me. And that's what she was giving off until Bill decides, like, okay, well, he over there trying to plot and plan, like, damn, how for to get to her, how for the, like, he plotting and planning all this stuff, but baby, she getting married tomorrow, so it's really nothing you can do. But he like, damn, well, I could still try. And then he goes to the bathroom, only for her to follow him to the bathroom, and baby, they do nasty things in the restroom. And she's getting married tomorrow, so... That says a lot. Like, I, I like her as an actor. The girl who plays Regina, I really do like her as an actor. And she's so pretty. And she's black. Y'all know I love black girls. Cause. And she, her, um, she acts very, very well. Her and most of the women, honestly, that's in this series are very great actors. The guys are too. But the girls, they do really, really good. Like, I applaud them. Mm. So we end off the episode with Bill and Regina in the bathroom getting it on, getting it on. But before I kind of end up this recap, I do want to go back a little bit into Tom because before we see Bill and Regina in the bathroom, we did go to Tom who's trying to get into his house, y'all. Why this crazy stalker, nurse, addicted, bipolar, single white female <laughs> single black female <laughs> girl Valerie is at Tom though like a psycho and like I told y'all before Tom is so passive that his actions and his moves in certain situations just don't sit right with my soul because it's like I need you to be a little bit more angrier I need you to be a little bit more assertive about making sure she's nowhere around you in your area not can't even reach you touch a bouquet smell you can't look at you like visible to you like nothing like i need him to put more effort into that happening like she needs a he needs a restraining order on her because he's too um attainable for her like every time you turn around she is there and that is scary that ain't scary to you tom that is scary to me why is she Popping up everywhere, but that girl, she done found a way into that man building at his door, and she is confessing her love for him, and she wants to be with him, and she just needs to be with him. Like, you are the one for me, and you need to act like it. And he like, girl, you just about to ruin my life, my career. I'm about to lose my um doctor's accreditation. I'm about to honestly go to jail because of your accusations on me at my workplace, like, because of that. So no, I need you to go. And so they grew up forever to leave. But eventually she did leave. Whew. Thank you, Jesus, cause she crazy. She crazy. That girl is great, great. Okay. <sighs> so I'm so glad that you guys stuck through and listened to my craziness and my rants on this week's episode which i really enjoyed because last week's episode like i told y'all i thought it was really going nowhere because it was just one scene one tone the entire time and then it did get brought up a little bit then it kind of went back down and then it got brought back up but this episode really gave us some juice and brought life back to the series so i'm so happy about that shout out to you tyler perry and shout out to the writers and directors and everybody else because it's really good so y'all let me know in the comments what y'all think about this episode have y'all been watching this series what more do you want from this series is it giving you enough i hear a lot of people really don't like it but i have been seeing some comments and some reviews of people who do like it so it's always with tyler perry films it's mix matchy matchy mix also like this video if you like this video but don't dislike my video if you don't like my video, boo, then call off. And last but certainly not least, subscribe to the queendom, baby. Bye.